loving out loud in our life for money and our purpose through the energy of our ancestors. I want to thank you for your likes, your comments, your shares, and your subscribes here on the channel. And as always appreciated. And a major shout out to all the channel members, as well as the members over on Patreon and on my website. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued support, my loves. Happy full moon. Uh, we have our full moon ceremony in a butterfly school of transformation. The replay will be in the garden and the butterfly area after. And so, yes, I look forward to meeting up with you all later on today. So this message, um, thank you to just everyone who is here um, in this space and who allows me to tap into the frequency that they need, you know, and shout out to the ancestors. The ancestors have been coming through with just a lot of energy and messages lately. And with today being the full moon, it's like for some reason, it's always strongest. You know what I'm saying? Around that time and, you know, the message yesterday that I did and I had to end it. If you made it to the end, I had to end it because the message, it was so many different messages coming in. And I'm just like, okay, I feel like I'm all over the place, grandmother. Like, what do you want me to tell to the people? Like, what do you want me to say? And so... I was told to end the, you know, conversation and, you know, sleep on it and come back. And so I had a dream last night, honey. Okay. No Martin Luther King, but I had a dream and, um, I had got quite a few messages from the dream. And so I wrote them down, um, from your grandmother, but it's like, it's going to be read and like, I'm going to read the, the piece of energy that she gave. And then we're going to go deeper into each one. Um, I feel like this is probably going to be a longer reading, um, but because we're going to make sure we hit all of the points and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight points. So without further ado, my lungs, okay. Um, and I mean, you can listen to this one and then listen to the other one if you haven't listened to the other one yet, because they're not um, like continuous synchronous in that way but they do go together at the same time so you do need to listen to that one too okay so the first piece of energy that she gave was keep them out of your business if they are not a part of the plan okay um but then she also said every season is not a silent one so it may be some things that you want to share you know or you have been sharing and you're in a season of planning still. Like it's not something that's set in stone. It's something about waiting until something is set in stone before you release it out publicly to, you know, everyone else. And grandmother, why is that? Because people will try to speak fear into your plan. And so if you allow them to speak fear into your plan before you plan it, you're going to take into account the fear that they spoke to you unintentionally during your planning phase, okay? It's something about not allowing yourself to subconsciously internalize other people's reactions. And right now you're still working through that and building that. And people's reactions to these changes and the things that you wanna do, it won't all be like positive. It won't be all in support is what she's saying but she's saying every season won't be a silent one though it's just that in this season right now there are some things that you're called to keep silent as you plan it and get it together okay everyone doesn't need to know only those who are a part of the planning process you got the eight of six is coming out so yeah the eight of six is something moving fast for you but it moves fast because there's nothing getting in the way to stop it okay you got the father of knives in the reverse there's no energy coming into speak out against it with this level of authority like no and da, 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 you know what i'm saying because you know sometimes and your grandmother she knows this you know sometimes you take the word of someone who's older than you just because they're older than you but your grandmother is saying that's not always the best case just because they're older than you and they have more experiences than you doesn't mean that they know what's best for you in this lifetime and it's something I'm hearing her say about not falling into the trap of feeling like all elders have your best interest at heart. So there may be an elder that you want to share some information with or something, but they're a little messy and you know they're messy. And she's saying that they'll be messy with you the same way that they're messy with everyone else. What's up with this elder? 
is someone that's older than you. It's giving a feminine energy or just a masculine that's operating in um, his feminine. Yeah, you got the sun card coming out with Big Mama, okay? This person, they they, they be seen a lot, you know? Um, but they're also a very, like, generous person, so they give a lot as well. And I'm hearing your grandmother say just because they feed you and all that don't mean that they have what's best. You know, sometimes they doing it to get you comfortable, to get you to start talking, okay? So somebody be out here feeding people and stuff just so they can sit down and get comfortable, okay? They be getting comfortable. Mm-mm. Out here getting comfortable. Kick off them shoes, okay? Baby girl, get comfortable. We about to do something you never done before. Not you singing that, Granny. <laughs> she said, no, you're singing it. <laughs> All right, Granny, what else do you have um, for your baby? It's something about knowing how to patronize and communicate and work with someone, but not... Um, falling into the traps of like what they try to say or what they try to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, learn how to get the information that you need without revealing too much is what she's saying. You need to learn how to get the information you need without revealing too much. Anything else, Grandma? No. <laughs> no. That was her way of saying no more on that one, honey. Mm. Oh, shoot. It's just, it's giving this vibe of you may have been working with someone or thinking that someone, you know, that they have these intentions or whatnot, but it's like, look at their personality um outside of that and it's just like yeah they're not the best um energy to share certain things with you know what i'm saying and so this next piece of energy that your grandmother shared was to allow your gifts to make room for you um but you have to unwrap them first oh this this the deck i'm like where's the deck at? but you have to uh, unwrap them first you know what i'm saying like it's like you have this box this gift that's wrapped up and you're choosing to not look at it because the way the package is, it doesn't look like it's a, a fancy gift. And so you just choose to not open it. You know, like when you were younger, Christmas time, you know, people always want to go for the big gifts, right? They ignore the small gift. But a lot of times the small gifts be stuff of value, you know? It'd be the stuff that really be needed. You know, I'm hearing your grandmother say, like, it'd be the things that a lot of people don't think about, you know. And it's something about you looking at even the smallest of the gifts because they all evolve. Because I'm hearing your grandmother say, you know, you have the caterpillar, you have the chrysalis, and then you have the butterfly. You know, a lot of people mistake other little insects for a caterpillar. You know, they mistake the little black moss for caterpillars. Nah, baby, that ain't no caterpillar. Okay, it may be a lookalike. It may be in the same little species, but it's not the same thing. And your grandmother is saying you need to view yourself and your work and what you do and what you have to offer in the same way. But you have to allow them to evolve and they can only evolve through practice. They can only evolve through, you know, being in the open, being worked with. And there's something that you haven't been doing or connecting with because you may have been making other things a priority that don't really make you feel good. You know, it's kind of like you're doing it just to be doing it. You're doing it just because it's there. But your grandmother's energy is saying to allow yourself to connect with something that you love to do and allow it to evolve like i keep seeing someone who like loves to crochet right and they stop crocheting because they start doing all this other stuff but it's just like no your self-care has been crocheting you know and so they get back to crocheting 
and all of a sudden it evolves. They learn new stitches and next thing you know, they're making these extravagant items and people are paying hundreds of dollars for them because they appreciate 1010 on the time, the authenticity and the time it took to make it by hand. Allow your gifts to make room for you because they will. They have a lot to offer for you, okay? They have a lot to offer for you. But you have to open the gift, you know, and you have to allow it the time to evolve. You know, I'm hearing your grandmother say, a lot of times people try to rush the process or they see the ending process and then they look at the beginning and so they choose to not begin because they know how long it's gonna take to get to the end. But your grandmother is saying, don't let the journey frighten you. The journey is the best part. If you learn how to embrace it, the journey is the best part. But it's some type of skill that you have, this craft or this thing that you like to do on the low key, you know, it's, it's very creative, it's very sacral um, energy, creative energy, something that you like to do, whether it's write, poetry, draw. Um, I mentioned crocheting earlier and knitting cooking, whatever it is. Yeah, you got the 10 of cups in the upright. So this is definitely um, a project that your grandmother is saying that you need to stay connected to. You need to stay doing this. It's something about this that brings a sense of fulfillment and it erases, you know, it brings also good luck because there's a ladybug on the cup. You can't really see it because the lighting, but there's a ladybug on the cup and it's like, it's all in prestige, you know, top notch. And it's like you're, you shifting. It's like a shift, a shift of energy. You're, you, you're operating out of enjoyment. And when you operate out of enjoyment, you're operating out of abundance. So something about you allowing this gift to evolve and make room for you brings a ten of cups. So everything that you've been wanting, it hasn't been in doing more of the things that you don't want to do. It's always been in something that you've loved to do. One, two, three, four. But you may have been just looking at it from, you know, a different angle. And I mean, that's understandable. I'm hearing your grandmother say, especially if that's all that you've known. If that's all that's being shown to you and put in front of your face. Of course, that's all you're going to understand and see. But you're not held accountable for what you don't know. You know, but she's also saying that now that you know that energy is held accountable if that's what you want. That then takes us to the next point. Me saying that, I'm sitting here looking at it, wow, it takes me to the next thing that your grandmother gave me. And is you are worthy of prosperity. You are worthy of prosperity. Don't allow the fear of success to come in and stop you from fully embracing all that is available to you. And I'm hearing her say, it didn't just begin. This is something that happened from with your parents and when you were younger. And it's like you re-identifying not only your worth, but like who and what is around you as well, you know? And there may be a childhood wound that still connects to this feeling, you know, on how sometimes, because I'm hearing her say sometimes you just look around expecting something to happen, you know, because you're so used to things happening, things coming in and stopping something, you know what I'm saying? And I'm hearing her say, expect things to go perfect. So that then everything that happens, it's an alignment. Everything that happens is in alignment. So 
So you are worthy of prosperity. This feels like the perfect time to pull out my inner child deck. The link to this deck is down below in um, my description box is in my Amazon storefront. So feel free to check that out if you want to check out this deck. We used it for the first time last night in the um, full moon message. And I like it. It also comes with a journal prompt and an activity. So if you feel like you connect with it, just document the activity um, to utilize. Okay. <clears throat> So, grandmother, what connects to the worthiness of prosperity? And, you know, you know, what's interesting. When I was writing this down, I asked her, I said, why not abundance? And she said, abundance has a dual meaning. Abundance is not clear enough. You can have abundance of anything. You have an abundance of pain. You can have an abundance of joy. You can have an abundance of poverty or you can have an abundance of riches. Abundance just means a lot of something. Prosperity means good shit. And she let me say that with no problem, okay? Let me look up the definition. Because I did ask her that. And I didn't look up the definition to clarify it, you know? Because usually when I'm tapped, I don't. Because maybe she get on me for questioning sometimes. But I actually want to read you this definition, okay? And it's something about your wording, the words that you use, how you use it. So prosperity means a successful, flourishing, or thriving condition. Good fortune. Okay. Ten of Cups energy. Now let's just talk, look at abundance. Okay. She says she wants you to be more clear with what it is and your energy of what you're calling in. Abundance means an extreme, extremely plentiful or oversufficient quantity or supply. It's just plentiful, okay? That's all abundance is. So that's why she had me write prosperity and not abundance when um, I wrote that message, okay? Let's get into this inner child healing energy. I really love this deck because it has an indigenous feel to it. Two, she wanted me to pull two. So the first one, card number 28. So this could have happened around the time we were 28 years old, two or eight. Review your responsibilities. Not all responsibilities are ours to hold. Mm. And that goes into when your grandmother's energy was just saying about allow your gifts to make room, like allow them to evolve and make room. But you may be putting a lot of your energy into something else. Some of that something else may be taking on other people's responsibilities as if it's yours. So then it takes away from your time. All right, let's read the card. Taking responsibility is binary in nature and like a coin. There will always be two sides to it. On one side, if the responsibility is not ours to hold, it can be draining and harmful. On the other side, if the responsibility is ours to hold, it can be very empowering. There are certain aspects of ourselves that only we can be responsible for. Otherwise, we are giving our personal power away. Moreover, if we hold responsibility for another person, it can, be, it can hinder their growth process and possibly damage our relationship with them. If you have pulled this card, then there may be an imbalance in your life regarding responsibilities. So the inner work exercise. Take some time today to practice responsive journaling. First, by asking yourself if you have given away your power by not taking responsibility for something. And second, by asking yourself if you are carrying something that does not belong to you. Once you have written down your answers, ask yourself how you can implement change around your relationship with responsibility in your life today. It can be equally hard to release responsibility as it can be to take them up. So be gentle with yourself in this practice and know that it can take some time to accomplish. The journaling prompt. Is there anything stopping you from releasing or taking responsibility today? 
All right. Ooh, and that's a double uh, meaning. So taking responsibility. So taking responsibility for what you want to do as well. You know, what you feel connected to as well. I'm drinking all my dreams and visions tea. I wanted some water too. All right, let's look at the second one. The second one is card number seven with breathe in. Practice practice breath work today. Y'all know I have a minor lisp if that comes out at times. <laughs> and it's coming out this time. And so I don't know if your grandmother had a slight lisp or someone, your great grandmother, something in there. All right, breathe in. We breathe in, we breathe out. This is such a simple yet momentous thing. Our breath brings life into our bodies and has the power to bring peace to our souls. If you have pulled this card, then it might be time to focus on your breath today. The self-care exercise. This exercise will focus mainly on becoming aware of your breath. As you go through your day, take time to stop and notice your breath. How are you breathing? How does it make you feel? Each time you stop to focus on your breath, make an effort to deepen that breath. How does breathing deeper make you feel? Do you feel more peace when you do so? Continue this practice throughout the day, noticing your breath and then deepening your breath. The journaling prompt. After practicing this exercise for a whole day, ask yourself how this practice has impacted you and how you feel. Are you aware of any new sensations in your body? And it also just makes me feel of the aspect of getting to um, this place of just peace, you know, of not really allowing your, you don't have to focus on anything else. When you're focused on your breath, you're focused on the here and now. You're not so focused on the future. You're not so focused on the past. You're focused on now. Oops. You're focused on now. You're focused on now. And it's something about being focused on now that connects you to prosperity. You deserve it. The next piece of what she had was what happened is your testimony. No one else's. Um, there's going to be times when people try to tell you what happened or how it happened or how you should feel about how it happened. And your experience is yours. Your experience is real. Now, you don't want to be ruled by your experience. You want to find a way to allow that experience to empower you. But don't allow anyone to come into your life and tell you what your experience was. You know what you felt. You know what happened. You know how it happened. And there may be someone, it's like, it, no, this feels like a warning energy your grandmother is giving. The more you do start, when you do start coming out of your shell, there's going to be people who tries to like refute it or try to tell you how you should feel or how you should change something. And it's like, we can't control how someone reacts to something or how something affects them because the same thing can happen to two people and they both react to it differently. Your grandmother is saying is how you reacted and connected to it. It's real and it matters. And allow yourself to make sense of it. Allow yourself to take power over it, though. Don't allow it to cripple you. So what happened to you is your testimony and no one else's. But don't allow it to cripple you to the point where it holds you back and stops you. Your grandmother don't want you to feel like something is holding you back and stopping you. Like heavy on that. Okay, different deck.
the nine of pentacles, but it wanted to be in the reverse, but she had me turn it in the upright. This is like a destiny energy. So something was always meant to be in like this energy of destiny. But don't let someone else shift your destiny. Don't let someone come in and shift your reality. Or, yeah, whatever is your destiny, whatever is meant to be yours, don't let someone come in and shift that. Like, turn your door upside down. Or even have you walk through a whole different door when you're supposed to go through this nice, beautiful, well-lit door. You know what I'm saying? Your grandmother is definitely saying, like, what happened with you? It happened, you know, with you. It's your life. It's your testimony. How you work through that and with that is your business. I just heard genuine ain't none of your friend's business. It's like you're called to enter into a certain gate. And your experience is what leads you there. Your experience is what led you to that space. Everyone can't go. Because everyone was not given um, an admittance letter. Okay? Everyone wasn't given an invitation. This is like you getting an invitation to somewhere and you show up with guests. Did they tell you to bring guests? Did they tell you that guest was welcome? Did you ask? Stop adding people to your testimony if they ain't in it. Let them tell it from their perspective. They don't have to tell it in your space. And you don't have to tell yours and anyone else's. But it's also, I'm hearing your testimony will make a way for you as well. I'm hearing heavily your testimony will make a way for you. No one else. You make a way for yourself. No one else does. No one else does. <laughs> the three of coins. There's a lot of coins coming out here. There's a whole lot of money out here. Okay. Then ending it with the 10 of, oops, with the 10 of air. And the 10 of air is a Dementor energy on here. So it's like something coming and trying to suck the energy out of something, trying to suck the life out of something that you've worked so hard for to understand and maintain and well, create and maintain. Understand, create, maintain. You've worked so hard to have this in alignment. How dare you let someone else or something else come in and shift that? You won't. And your grandmother said, and ain't. Okay? And ain't. You didn't work too hard for this. You didn't come through a lot. You've seen a lot. Experienced a lot. But you've made it through it as well. Okay? And you deserve to celebrate that. Anything else? <clears throat> Your testimony connects with an ancestor's energy. <clears throat> it's like something repeated through generations until someone finally spoke out on it and broke it. And you're the one who's doing that. So by you speaking out, breaking something, it stops something from happening through each generation in your family. Wow. Okay, she's giving me this example of, say there's an uncle who messes with every generation of women. And then it gets to you. 
and you tell. You say something. And then he gets locked up and all that in the perfect world, right? And it stops. It's something like that. Like you speaking up in regards to something, speaking up and out about something, it forces something else to stop. Some people didn't have a grandmother that would have protected the family like that. Some people had a grandmother who would protect a molester. Because her son. Mm, mm, mm. You know, this goes into the next point someone who hurt you bad will apologize this lifetime but don't wait for it that's the next point that she had me write down when i was channeling her energy someone who hurt you bad will apologize this lifetime but don't wait for it okay your grandmother doesn't want you to wait around for someone to admit their wrongdoing because you're the only one who's suffering in the end. You're the only one who's suffering in the end. knows that they didn't treat you right that they didn't handle you right they know that they blocked you from certain things okay they know what they did they know what they did we're gonna pull some signs they know what they did Okay, my phone just lit up. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the angel number that came up because it's weird that it lit up and my phone is on do not disturb and I didn't touch it. Mm. I think that was a personal message to me. All right, what signs are these? What signs grandmother is this? Sagittarius with temperance. Cancer with the Queen of Cups. Scorpio with the Six of Cups. A lot of water. I need three more, grandmother. Scorpio again with the Seven of Cups. Libra with the Three of Swords. Give me two more, Grandmother. <laughs> she said I did. Okay, there was a couple cards that had two signs on it. Let me see. So, Gemini. It was only one of them. Okay, I still need one more sign, Grandmother. I was thinking water and air. That's funny. Leo with strength. All right. (sighs) 
it takes a lot of courage and power and strength in order to restrain yourself from putting yourself in a tough situation in response to someone else's BS and their wrongdoing. And your grandmother is saying that she is proud of you that you didn't allow what this person did to you and your energy to stop you from what you're called to do and how you're called to do it. It's something about you alchemizing. And staying focused, you know. Staying focused on what you have to do. How you have to do it. When you can do it. But it takes a lot of courage and strength to do the things you've been doing. And you need to know that. And in that, those who've hurt you, they know they hurt you. They know what they did. They know what they did. I promise you they do. And one day is gonna get so tight on them. Some of y'all is gonna happen by the end of the year. A lot of y'all, actually. About 75% of y'all. And they're going to apologize in their own way. But don't sit around waiting for it. You know you deserve an apology. But you don't have to wait on it, you know. Because you're the one who's going to suffer in the end. And that then takes us to the three of swords. Because when you wait on it and you're, oh, they owe this to me and they owe this. No, this is what you need to do. You need to write off the debt. It's like what the companies do. When they don't get the money that people, you know, that went into credit card debt and stuff and they, they realize they're not going to get their money from it, they just write off the debt, right? So they get a tax write-off, okay? Tax write-off, so basically the money's not lost, right, as a deduction. It's like you writing something off and still getting what's due to you and then them coming back around and giving you your payment still. So now you got double, okay? It's giving that energy of when you wait around for it, it's like what's really going to be depreciating is you because you could be putting that energy into something else to build. And as you put that energy into something else, they come around when they come around, but you you got to let it go, get it off the get it off your shoulder. You know, get it out of you. You deserve much more. Seven of Cups. You deserve so much more. And that's opportunities. Um, the wishful thinking. Like, what have you really been wanting to do? Someone may have tried to make you feel like something was an illusion or it would be hard to obtain. But it's not as hard as it appears. It's not as hard as it appears, okay? And sometimes you have to go into something with a slight delusion in order to get started. Like, you got to think big sometimes to be like, you know what? I'm about to do it, you know? What is possible? You have the page of pentacles. What's possible? You know, your grandmother is saying something needs to be started now. Something needs to be started now. And you know that it needs to be started now. It gives a major financial opportunity for you. You thinking outside of the box with it. It's like some type of training thing that helps you with more credentials in some way. Because there's a lot of skill development in here. So it's like with you starting off, if you focus on skill development, and that goes back to where she said, allow your gifts to evolve earlier. So like get into skill development. Get 
they're going to love you for your ambition. You know, the page of pentacles is ambitious. Like anything can happen. You know, I can make anything happen. That's the page of pentacles. Which then goes into the ace of swords with clarity and breakthroughs and ideas. So it's like it's giving the inner the energy of once you make the decision that you're doing this, the ideas begin to flow. And listen to the ideas. And I'm hearing your grandmother say just because others aren't doing it doesn't mean that it's not for you. Okay. What if you're meant to do something different to start a new wave versus following another wave? What if you were meant to start your own wave instead of starting another? You know what I'm saying? Instead of following another one. Something has to be given like this mental or spiritual surgery I'm hearing. It needs to be reconfigured to be in alignment with this path. And it's something about a perception of something. Like as soon as a perception shifts, something clicks. Okay. You got the six of cups. So it's a perception shift that's shifting from something of the past, something of the familiar. So it's something of the familiar that may be keeping your mind in a space that's not in an energy of progress or in an energy of what's next. And it may be trying to like revamp something of the past or something that is like overdue and done or it should be done. You know, because the Six of Cups is all about memories. And so letting go of some memories. I'm hearing what too many memories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're just killing me. Do, 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 do. Too many memories. Come through, Johnny. So, it's something about redefining some memories. Like, letting some memories finally go. They can't go with you. It's like the longer they're with you, I'm hearing your grandmother say it's like poison to you. It can't go. Write it down, cut it up, burn it up outside and let it go. Create new habits, new ways of thinking. But let it go, let it go, baby. I know she said let it flow, but it felt like it go with that. Because then you have the Ace of Pentacles. After you let it go, you just see more opportunities. It's like seeing, seeing the moments that may appear to be difficult or hard or troubling, seeing all things as opportunity at this time. Seeing all things as opportunity. It's not something to set you back. It's all opportunity. Ace of Pentacles is a promise of prosperity. It's like a personalized blessing with just your name on it, you know? Queen of Cups. It's something about receiving universal support and spiritual support, nurturing support. Your grandmother said you can always call on her and that then takes you into temperance. So having your mood to keep your, your, pay attention to your mood at all times. Pay attention to the things that get you elevated and the things that keep you calm. This season of your life, go the route of peace and balance. If it gets you too aroused and just too, it's too much for right now. Take it slow. Somebody been eating a lot of bananas or something. I just thought it's her. I like to eat, 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 
apples and bananas. Okay. Um, but you have the full card coming out with new beginnings and possibilities. And that all comes from having the sense of jumping out there with this blind faith of knowing that everything is going to be working for you, you know, and being excited for these possibilities. And the thing is with the fool, when the fool is starting new, the fool only has the necessities. He has his little knapsack and his little dog with him. All that baggage is gone. Okay. So we went through all of that to get to the full energy. All the baggage is gone. Okay. Bag a lady. You gonna hurt your back. Dragging all them bags like that. I guess nobody ever told you. All you must hold on to is you. Is you, is you one day he gonna say you crowd in my space? All right, the next piece of energy I got from your grandmother when I was channeling and writing down. We have three more points left, y'all. I told y'all at the beginning of this reading it was gonna be a long reading. Because when I channeled the pieces and I was talking to the grandmother energy, and that's why she told me to stop yesterday. Because it's just like, this is about to be a long reading. But it all had to go in together. So the next part was, if a plant can't grow there, neither can you. If a plant can't grow there, neither can you. Some environments are just not made for plants to be able to grow. They're too shady. They're too dark. And I mean, some plants can grow in that, but if you want flowers and stuff, you need sun. Okay? You need sun. But then also think about a plant. A plant can't grow on infertile ground. The ground has to be very fertile in order for the plant to grow there. Okay? If an area doesn't have plants or flowers around it, you may want to like question it, okay? Definitely institutions and organizations, like this season, they need to be having flowers and stuff out around, okay? If they don't, side item, okay? Side item. <sighs> Something about learning how to keep plants alive though. You know, her energy has been coming through a lot with plants, though. It's been coming through with plants for the past couple months. But it's something about knowing where you can grow and where you can't. So even thinking about with plants and when plants outgrow their pots, you know, it comes a point where you have to get a new pot and you have to repot the plant. And she's saying that's the same thing with you. Do you need to repot yourself? Do you need to repot yourself? Do you need to move yourself to a space where you can evolve? Where you can keep growing? Because your roots may be, you know, overextending from where you're currently at. And so thinking about a plant, treat yourself like a plant. You have to nurture yourself. You have to water yourself. You have to give yourself sunlight. You got to speak love to yourself. Okay. And not only just speak it, you have to treat yourself with love as well. Nurture yourself. Make yourself a top priority in the entire process. And you'll know if you've outgrown a space, you know. You'll know if you've outgrown a space. You got the two of pentacles in the upright, the king of pentacles in the reverse. 
and then the star card in the reverse. You've been juggling a lot. And in you juggling a lot, you may be working for someone who doesn't allow you to fully showcase who you are or evolve. So you may be working somewhere where there's no ability for um, upgrade or um, upward movement, promotion. There's no space for promotion where you're at. But you handle a lot. You juggle a lot which also means that there's a lot that can go on your resume for that new job that you apply to, okay? Someone is benefiting off of you and then they leave you scrambling to pick up the remainder for yourself. They leave you scrambling to pick up the remainder for yourself. So it could be that you're giving all your good energy and soul to another space when you need to be cultivating a lot of it for self at this time. You need to be cultivating a lot of it for self at this time. The next point, nothing else has worked because it wasn't aligned with your soul's frequency right now. And that makes sense even in the situation where you're at right now, the space where there's not much room for upward movement. Um, something hasn't worked out in this space because it wasn't aligned with your soul's frequency and what is meant to align. You know, it gives us, I'm hearing your grandmother say, it's like trying to become a millionaire in a space that can, that has a maximum of a thousandaire. You know what I'm saying? Like what you want to reach, the frequency of what you desire to be on doesn't align with some of the things that you try to align with. And I'm also hearing her say though, just because something aligned for someone else doesn't mean that it's going to align for you. Just because something aligned for someone else doesn't mean that it's going to align for you. So what it worked for them. She had me right down. So what it worked for them. That's them. You're you. You have two different purposes, two different life goals, two different assignments on this earth. Two different interests, for real, for real. Because I'm hearing her say, sometimes you be trying to shift yourself to fit in within some stuff. And that's not what it, that's not what it is. Okay. Stop. Um, <laughs> this is giving Cinderella. <laughs> like trying to force a shoe to fit that ain't yours. Because do you really even want to be a princess for real? You know, it's given that. Do you only want to be a princess because that's what was put on in your face when you was a child? You know, do you really want, like, it's something about looking at what do you really want and how do you really want it? Because nothing is, my stomach is growling, so we're definitely about to be getting off here in a second. Um... Because nothing is going to work if it's not aligning. It's not going to work if it's not aligning. Mm. 
Mother of Stakes. I saw that card twice. The Four of Stakes. Yeah. And then the Lovers. Okay. So the Mother of Six in reverse, the Four of Six in the upright, and then the Lovers in the reverse. The only one that's in the upright is the Four of Six, which is about building your foundation. So this is giving the vibe of not being influenced by other people. The Mother of Six in reverse gives me a vibe when we were talking earlier, when your grandmother was saying something about an older person not, um, not really being the best person to get advice and stuff from. That's what that is giving. And it's like you building your foundation and the courting in reverse with the lovers. So not even like judging your foundation based off of your connections and your lovers and things of that nature. Oh, y'all, my stomach is cutting up. We have one more point to get through. Grandmother, please. Then I need to do the Tuesday board message. So not making decisions based off of what other people want you to do and how other people feel you should do it, nor should you make it based off of your relationships and connections to other people. It's like you need to have some type of foundation for self of what you love to do, how you love to do it, and why you love to do it. And that's when you see things get deeper into alignment in the way that you want. Which takes us to the last piece. You stand out like a thumb. It's like you trying to play it safe and infiltrate a space. But it's like you can't fit in. Like you just don't fit in. Like it's like an alien who got on the entire uniform and stuff and trying to fit in. It's just like, okay, you got the uniform on. You're here. And all that, but you still, you don't, we know you're not one of, you know what I'm saying? We know that you're different. And your grandmother is saying that you are different. You stand out like a sore thumb. It's like you're in a space and everyone has on white and you just got all, you're, just, you're red. Like you're just some bright color. You know what I'm saying? You can't hide. And the longer you try to hide yourself, or pull yourself back from a space. The more your spirit is going to be trying to pull you, you know what I'm saying? Back. Like, because your spirit knows what's up. Do you hear me? Your spirit knows what's up. Your spirit knows what you want. Your spirit knows how you want it. But it's like your, your physical likes playing it safe. Your, your physical is like, but uh... I don't want to go through that. I don't want to go through those issues. You know what I'm saying? I, I want this. I want comfort. And some of you all, your grandmother is saying this season of your life is not about comfort. Because are you even really comfortable in that space that you don't like? Is it a false sense of comfort? I don't know. It's, it's something while she wants you to sit with yourself and ask yourself about that. Like... What type of comfort are in these spaces? And is it from a lack energy or an abundant, like, you know what I'm saying? Not even just abundant, a prosperity energy. Because she got on us about using abundance. So on a prosperity energy, which one is it on? You know, never make decisions based off of, you know, poverty. Yeah, Ace of Pentacles in reverse is definitely off of financials and um, chasing money, chasing this financial peace, this financial stability, but it's something about allowing it to attract to you because when you're in this space, the way you get it, it's not from a, a prosperity space. It's from like a five of coins space from a lack energy. Ooh. But you got this, though. Knight of Cups. Getting out of the illusions. You got this. Yeah. You got this. Seven of Pentacles in the upright. 
my diffuser just went off literally as soon as I said that. So I think that's her saying that that's the end of that message. Let's get some final words. So choose numbers one, two, or three. Grandmother, final messages for your grandbaby. If you made it to this part of the reading, I don't know, just share something. I don't know, I don't know. I wanted to say to do something or share something, but I can't think of anything right now. All right, if you chose one, she has, you have my energy inside of you. If you chose number two, they will try their best to tear you down. Do not let them. You chose number three, avenge my legacy. Your grandmother didn't always live the way she wanted to live, okay? And it's kind of like, in a way, you're giving another opportunity at this to make something happen that she wasn't able to do just yet. You know what I'm saying? But it all works out at the end of the day. That, 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 that. <laughs> It all works out at the end of the day, you know. All right, let's get an affirmation. I am connected, card number 28. We had card number 28 on the inner child card. So 28 has been prevalent. I'm going to read the 28 angel number. But I am connected. I have more in common with others than I realize. I seek commonality with people rather than focusing on outward differences. I am connected. But you know what I feel from this energy of just sometimes people isolate away from the world. They're like, no one's going to understand me. No one's going to want to buy this. No one's. Yeah, no, there are people out there who connect to it, too. OK. All right. Angel number 28 carries a frequency of utilizing services until you no longer need them. It connects the energy of a two and an eight to bring a one. This message is saying to use your resources while they are available to you. No one gets anywhere alone, and it's okay to utilize the support of other people or other resources in order to reach a personal goal. So you may need to start that process of connecting with an organization or a group or something to help you with what you're doing with your project. I think that's the end, y'all. Um... Thank you, Grandmother Energy, for coming through for this message. Um, thank you. Thank you. May this have blessed you and your spirit in the way that you may have needed at this time. And as always, always be real, always be true. Don't be afraid to do what your higher self and your spirit team is calling for you to do. Period. Love you all, and I'll see you later. Bye.